Hello, everyone. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Ahmad Glover, the founder of Wiggle Inc. How are you doing today, Dr. Glover? I'm living the dream, sir. Living the dream. Happy to be here. That's good. Glad to have you. Now, could you uh, please tell us who is Dr. Glover and what is Wiggle Inc.? Oh, wow. So uh, Dr. Glover is a retired Air Force acquisitions officer. Right? And so I uh, did 23 years in the Air Force uh, for acquisitions. I did all of the crazy stuff that you can imagine, you know, that, that your government spends your tax dollars on. Everything from uh, the F-22 secret squirrel stuff, F-35, you know, Gucci, whiz tree, to new ways to bend and, and shape waveforms, to satellites, to... Uh, special equipment for special operators to managing ranges for special operators. So all of that stuff uh, was me for a long, long period of my time, a long period of my life, right? A couple of decades. Uh, Wiggle is actually a subset of that time. So part of my challenge when I was in uniform was we would test these new Gucci things. And so a lot of that stuff, right, had these uh, a crypto in it. And so it had a a technology that allowed you to put a special key so the bad guys couldn't read the super secret messages and write all of this jazz. Well, to get the crypto into the device, you needed a crypto loader. That crypto to load, loader had a battery. So I don't care what you were working on, whether it's F-22, F-35, something for that special, it doesn't matter. If you get trying to get crypto into it, you need this loader. And if that battery dies, that loader was smart enough to go, hey, I think the Russians or the Chinese or whoever we're fighting this week uh, uh, is trying to attack. And so it would erase the key. And erase the key meant start over, do, 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 right? And so sometimes you got to go hundreds of miles to get the key reloaded to this thing, get back. It was just a nightmare. And so I always said, I'm going to solve that problem one day. And so after I retired, uh, got with some, some folks that I met while in uniform, uh, uh, primarily the folks out of MIT, uh, we developed a, a technology that would allow us to recharge those devices wirelessly. And that's where Wiggle was born. Kind of the same concepts we were using for some other Gucci military things about building these networks and transmitters all over the place and bouncing signals. Well, we came up with wireless electrical grids of local area networks or WIGL Wiggle. So that's me and how I got from uh, zero to hero. Wow. So... That's very technical uh, for someone like me who's a layman to wireless technology and things of that sort. Could you, I guess, describe what problem is Wiggle? I mean, you describe what its problem is solving, but could you go into a little bit more about the solution that you've come up with right now? Oh, yeah. So uh, my kids are, are aging so fast. So I used to say I have teenagers. I now have adults. So I have a 19-year-old daughter and an 18-year-old son. And so the problem I'm trying to solve is those two constantly stealing my core. <laughs> That's the problem I'm trying to solve. Uh, you know, or us getting in the car and, and them fighting over who's got ox, right? I didn't even know what ox meant, right? And so, <laughs> and so, uh, so that's the problem. We now live in a world where, you know, I'm, I'm looking around my desk. I mean, I've got a remote here for this thing. There's a remote for the TV. There's a battery in this thing. I'm probably missing nine or 10 other things just on my desk that have some kind of battery in it. And in the world that we live in, power is key to everything, right? Uh, TV can't do anything for you if it doesn't have power. The remote won't work if, if it doesn't have power, batteries in it. This thing is a great tool well, as long as it's charged up, right? Mm. You know, earbuds suck when they're, you know, you're at 1%, you know, <laughs> shutting down now. Um, and so the problem is, how do we, and, and it's not getting less, right? We're getting more and more and more. And here soon, your, your car will talk to your refrigerator, which will talk to the TV, which will tell you to turn the lights on. Our world is becoming interconnected. We have to have power. So the problem is, how do I keep those things that need batteries recharged, right? How do I keep them a lot without having to go hunt for a cord? Well, right, very few of us anymore are using an Ethernet cable. Right. Nobody, you know, you, you, if you think back sometimes you're, I don't know, audience may not be as old as me, but if you think back 
to where dial up and internet first came out, right? You had this cord and you're trying to get a longer cord and then with that longer cord, what it's like, right? So, and you go to the hotel and you could only sit the laptop over here by the window because that's where the cord was. And the cord was only that long, right? And But nobody does that anymore, right? We all use Wi-Fi now. We just move around. We're down in the lobby on the internet and all that kind of thing. So Wiggle looks to say, okay, can I do for mobile devices, for electrical power, what Wi-Fi did to that dang gum Ethernet board. That's the solution I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to give. Can I give you the ability that you simply log on, you subscribe to a network, and you receive wireless power to recharge your stuff? Right. Of course, everybody wants the phone, but there's bunches of other stuff. Right. There's you know, I knew I was going to miss something. I mean, I got a watch on too. Right. This guy got batteries in. And so is there a way for us to build networks that allow you to simply log on to the uh, network? And as our chief technology officer says all the time, the world becomes your ether. The world becomes your battery, right? All of this wireless energy, that is, that's already there, right? You're, you're surrounded by it right now. Can I use that, repurpose some of that to, uh, to recharge your devices? Can you give me an example of the technology being used? Like that's not the um the cell phone or maybe it is the cell phone just like where is it placed in the house and how am i using it to charge my phone or my what other you know my watch whatever device oh, perfect. so we it's it's lots of pieces but i'll break them down into three primary pieces right there's a transmitter there's a receiver and then there's software right software is everywhere to make everything work so my TV in my house, your TV in your house, that lamp above you, right? I can see a lamp, right? It can be repurposed, right? The reason for that light right now is to put light into the room. Well, hey, you'd also like that light to send some energy to your stuff, right? Hey, lamp, why don't you send me some of that radiating energy and put it in this watch so the battery won't die? So repurposing those existing things that connect to the grid, your TV, your refrigerator, if you plug it in, I want to make it wiggle and it. I want to turn it into a transmitter. I want to make it radiate energy. I know it's already doing that because you're looking at it, right? And so it, if it's giving you off energy, you know that it is radiating energy. I want to have that energy repurposed on purpose for us to do something. Hmm. On the receiver side, I want to now, of course, Apple's uh, you know, not going to let me uh, take every Apple phone, break it in half, and stick a wiggle and able transmitter. So right. generation one is I'm we're working on cases. So you put your phone into a case. That case is a transmitter. So if you plug into your phone, so I don't have to do anything to your phone. Phone doesn't need any smartness, anything. The software between our transmitter, our receiver is going to do all that and allow it to recharge your phone. And so that's where we're going um, with the technology. And that's kind of how you would see right? Those three pieces, the transmitter, the receiver, and the software to make that network work. So that radio or that, uh, the, I guess the rays that are being transmitted, how safe are they? Like for me now, if I put those earbuds in my ear, or even if I put like my phone too close to my ear, I start getting like a headache in like five seconds. Like how safe is this, are these rays compared to the ones that come from, you know, the phone or microwave or whatnot? Yeah, we, uh, we wrote a paper not not that not that long ago to to speak to safety, right? You know, you go to uh, Walmart, right? You go to Best Buy. No one's freaking out and and covering their head in tin foil when you walk down the TV aisle at Walmart, right? It's, it's right. There's what fifty TVs blasting at you, right? You go to Buffalo Wild Wings, right? No one's running out of there screaming. You know, they're cooking the kids at Buffalo Wild Wings, right? Because there's TVs all up all over the place. These are waveforms that we use all the time. In fact, the waveform that we demonstrated first was Wi-Fi, right? We get all technical, 2.4 gigahertz, blah, blah, blah. It's Wi-Fi. We took a Wi-Fi signal and used that, right? Well, even with my earbuds in, right? And I'm like, oh, man, these things make my head hurt. <laughs> But I'm still on my phone, right on my Wi-Fi, right? Because I got I gotta live. And so so that Wi-Fi signal is, you know, it's it's a regulated signal. Luckily for all of us, you, me, people listening to this, the FCC says, hey, Dr. Glover, oh, buddy, calm down. There's only a certain amount of energy you can radiate out, right? And so they regulate what that is. 
What we did was we've been very intentional. So our biggest customer is DOD. We've been very intentional about the energy that we're putting out. We only have used FCC approved transmitters. So we've worked with PowerCast, Energist. You can Google those guys and see what they make. They have transmitter, has an FCC sticker on it. Those are the ones we're using. They're inside of that safe space uh, that the FCC has. Now I'll tell you, right, Open Kimono. We are also looking to work with DARPA. DARPA has a big, big initiative out about wireless power and building these networks. And they're looking at using much larger uh, uh, spectrum uh, of energy. Uh, we're looking, working with them on how can we do that in a, in a safe way, right? So- Who is DARPA? Uh, Sorry. Uh, Defense Applied Research Programs Agency, I think it is, okay. D-A-R-P-A, okay. DARPA. Uh, and they've got a program called Power. Apologies, I don't know what Power stands for. P O W E R. But folks can Google DARPA Power, and it should pop up and show you what they're looking for, how they intend to do it. They need this for the battle space and those kind of things. But uh, that DARPA program is also going to look at taking those big waveforms and making those safe for us to use uh, on the battlefield. But again, everything that Wiggle has done has been inside of that safe space. We really use the Wi-Fi that I told you about, or radio, what we call the ISM bands. Um, basic radio frequencies, which are lower frequencies, and those two, you're they're bouncing all around you in that room right now. Understood, understood. So, in terms of the technologies that you have created, you have some patented products, and you have some patents pending. Could you break down um, what's current and what's um, in the works? Yeah. So we've been awarded, uh, as I sit here today, eight patents. Okay. So whenever I say that, I always, I always feel goofy when I say eight patents. People will say, oh, we've got 250 patents. Oh, we got a thousand patents. All patents are not the same. You can have what we call an ornamentation patent, right? That's a patent that says, I've got a cup. Cup has a handle shaped like this, about that big round, right? That's an ornamentation based on design. Mm -hmm. They're not very expensive. You know, you a couple thousand dollars, but not very expensive. So if I come and put my handle on the other side, right, or make mine square, I get around your patent, right? And so when people say, well, you got eight patents, we have the more expensive patents that you hear about, the ones that take lots of years to get, utility patents. I say, I have a device that holds hot, cold, room temperature beverages. I don't care how you make it. I don't care what it looks like. It's about the system, the systems and methods to hold hot, cold room temperature beverages. So Wiggle has patents around putting transmitters, right? We talked about transmitters a second ago, putting transmitters inside of televisions, putting transmitters inside of light switches, putting transmitters inside of light bulbs, putting transmitters inside of furniture that plug in, right? You know, you got the, the nifty couch, right? You know, you go to grandma's house, she got the couch, you push the button and the legs come up. We're talking about putting transmitters inside of this stuff, inside of your refrigerator, right? Wiggle holds those patents. The utility patent, not how it looks, we care less about what it does and how it works. Wiggle holds the utility patents on transfer of funds for wireless power. So if you, if you pay somebody for wireless power, Wiggle holds those patents. The utility patent. If you have a blockchain around wireless power, if you have crypto related to wireless power, right? So all of those things inside of that space that builds that entire ecosystem of wireless power are inside of our eight utility patents. Mm -hmm. And patents pending, um, well, it's close enough. It, this one is close enough for me to share with you. We realize that if, if, I, if I want you to log on to a network, right, subscribe to a network, and then that network's going to recharge your phone, one of the first things you want to know is, dude, how long is it going to take my phone to recharge, right? If you tell me it's going to take me two weeks, I, I don't have two weeks. I'm using this phone all the time. So we said, hmm, what can, reach, what, what can you use to recharge your phone right now? So we discovered that these power banks, right? You go to Walmart, you go to the airport, you buy this little power bank, you stick that thing into the phone, and boop, juices that phone up. Well, if I took that, what we call an intermediary storage device, and I recharged it, I could take that power bank, simply snap it to the back of your phone. It's recharging the phone. The power bank is being recharged by the wireless network. 
So that's one of the patents pending is the ability to do that. So you're getting recharge on your phone. You don't you don't skip a beat in how long how long it takes to recharge your phone. And then I'm recharging that guy while you move around on the net. Interesting. So what are the the different business models that you've identified? So our main focus is um, if, if, if you think back to what I said about Apple and Samsung, right? I, 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 I did an update not that long ago. So we're on start engine and uh, all of our stuff, filers and stuff. And so folks ask comments there on that. And I, I, I did a comment where I said, you don't want me making your TV, right? I said, I'm gonna put a transmitter in your TV. I don't know anything about making TVs. I'm great at this wireless power stuff, not so great at making TVs. You definitely don't want me making your cell phone or your key fob. So our business model is in alignment with that concept. We take the technology, demonstrate the technology where we want to show it, and then license that technology to the people who make the stuff, right? I want Samsung putting these receivers inside the device. I want Apple to say, oh yeah, let's go, got it, got it you made a case. Let's go the next step, take it from a case and put it inside the phone. So our business model is always to build it, demonstrate it in the applicable environment. Hey, Apple, we took your stuff and put our Gucci on it and then license the technology back to those folks. Again, you don't want Wiggle making Wiggle TVs. So that's our business model. So for everything we do is to build it, demonstrate it. Hey, have the, peop- the consumer go, yeah, 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 I want this. And then hand that to someone and go, hey, you probably ought to start selling this stuff. Mm. And you mentioned uh, people asking questions on your crowdfunding campaign. So you're currently raising uh, money right now. What is the money being used for and how's that process going so far? So, uh, all right, I don't want to break my arm, pat myself on the back. We were the first regulation uh, CF, regulation crowdfunding on Start Engine, which I think Start Engine is the largest platform. We were the first to hit the $5 million cap, right? So when the rules changed, it said you could go from a million bucks to $5 million. Wiggle was the first to do it uh, because, you know, as folks kind of grab their brains around, right? If you sit there and you go, well, yeah, I remember when grandma had the first cable television and she had a cord that went throughout the entire length of the house, right? And you push the buttons and you could hit the three in the middle to check, right? So yeah, we've gone a long way from that to watching YouTube on my phone. It, it is inevitable that we're going to go to wireless power. And so when people got that, Wiggle went through through the roof uh, on our crowdfunding rate, uh, Regulation CL. We then opened up for Reg A uh, raise. Didn't expect, I don't think anybody did, that the economy would just fall off of a cliff uh, within days of us going live. Uh, but fortunately, we have remained one of the most funded on uh, Start Engine, even, even in this current uh, market. I kept those down, bonds are down, your 401k is dying, right? But Wiggle has, has, has done really, really well. Part of that, I think, is, is also due to uh, revenue generated, right? So we are, uh, you know, making money with our government clients. And, and so folks are seeing that we're hitting our milestones and we're moving forward. So uh, thanks for asking. Our raise is going really, really well. That's fantastic. So for those who want to learn more about Wiggle and possibly invest in the campaign that you have going on right now, how can they do so? So I would say go to Start Engine slash W-I-G-L, start engine slash W-I-G-L. Um, and and there's, a, there's a bunch of good stuff on it. One, uh, you know, it's not just, hey, I saw this video, this guy was saying some stuff. You can see, you know, SEC filings. You can see uh, financials on there. You can see uh, what other folks have asked. Right? There's a whole comment section. You can see all the technical, uh, you know, stuff. We put lots of updates out. And so that's the best place to see anything about Wiggle is to go there, and, uh, you know, do your due diligence uh, on our company. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, Dr. Glover. I uh, appreciate your time and best of luck with your raise and with growing your company. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would I would like to, uh, to leave with one parting thing. Yes. Uh, I offer this up whenever I do this, uh, especially for your community and folk, folks that are going to see this uh, uh, for black and brown folks. I will say... Uh, I did not know how capital works. I I mean, got two associate's degrees, two bachelor's degrees, two master's degrees and a PhD in business. Knew Bo Diddley about this capital raise stuff. 
the folks I knew that I could call, they didn't know, right? They knew, we knew venture capital, uh, right? You know how to, to do those, go to the golf course, your uncle is a judge, right? You knew that stuff, but nothing about how this crowdfunding capital raise works. And so uh, as much as I can be, as much as I have the time to, I try to make myself available as a resource, right? You say, hey, I don't like wiggle, I don't wanna go, okay. But maybe you have an idea that you want to push forward, uh, that you are looking to raise capital, um, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you for, you know, giving me the opportunity to speak with your community. You guys, you know, uh, you know, hit, up, hit us up, a ask questions. I would, I would love to uh, tell you what I have learned because I haven't found any books, any seminars, any YouTube, anything on how this works. So please, please, please use me as a resource. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Glover. You have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Same to you. Take care.